So, okay. So, yes. It's, okay. Once again, hello and welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup. And uh, my name is Roland and I am happy to be your guest for today's session. And today I think it's a really awesome one because uh, we have uh, two guest speakers here. And um, the first one will be Raphael. Uh, he would like to introduce us his blockchain course. He has developed a blockchain course on education level and uh, he would like to present it to us and uh, we will see how this uh, goes and uh, how we can contribute and how we can use this to improve our learning process. And the second one will be Ravi or Ravi and uh, he is going also to present us uh, a side project he has developed and uh, he has developed a so-called command line interface tool and with this with this tool we can um, this tool can help uh, to generate the configuration material for hyperledger projects and uh, especially for fabric but i think also for other projects and yeah so this is a very short introduction from my side and now i think the first one uh, is uh, Raphael. and when you're ready Raphael, you can uh, take over the session and uh, can present us your screen and you can start uh, if you are ready thank you ron uh, thank you for that introduction uh, i i think you need to stop your screen share so i can start mine um, so, um, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, I would like to talk very briefly about um, a project that I've been developing in the last few months. Um, and this project is a, a blockchain uh, university level course that has been done in the context of the Hyperledger Summer Internship Project. So, my name is Rafael Balciar. I'm from Lisbon. Uh, I'm a PhD student and I'm currently exploring blockchain interoperability. So how could we leverage several blockchains for um, new use case scenarios? How can we make blockchains talk to each other? And uh, I think this is a very uh, interesting uh, area of research, which also combines with the, the course I, I've been doing. You have my uh, personal website there if you would like to check some of those. I've been working with Dave Husby from the Hyperledger Foundation, and this course focus, focuses on Fabric and Hyperledger Umbra. So the outcome of the internship was the course. Uh, we called it Enterprise Blockchain Technologies, because the, the idea is to direct the course more to enterprise blockchains, uh, namely Hyperledger projects, in a way that they can be taught at universities. So the idea is that we have a a course that is extendable, extensible and standalone. So universities can pick, cherry pick the modules that they want to use and easily adapt them to, to their audience. Currently we have two modules. The first one introduces blockchain and the second one focuses on fabric and a little bit on Umbra. The goals of the project, firstly, it's to teach students the theory on blockchain. So what is blockchain? Uh, what, which are the technologies that support blockchain, which problems can it solve. For that, we divided, uh, we, we associated several labs to, uh, to fulfill this goal. The first laboratory talks about distributed systems. So what is state, state machine replication? What is a distributed system? Um, how, do they, how do separate nodes talk to each other? And how do they decide on the common uh, truth, which is uh, essentially done via consensus. And um, to solidify this concept, we introduced the raft algorithm, which is used uh, on Fabric. After that, some uh, basic uh, information on cryptography and security. So symmetric, asymmetric cryptography, what, you, what is a digital signature? Uh, how can we guarantee uh, strong authentication, authorization, and accountability? And to solidify these concepts, we present RSA. RSA is not used on Fabric. It, it, um, for digital signatures, it uses 
uh, ECDSA, but uh, RSA is uh, quite a, an easy algorithm to understand and it's typically used in universities to introduce this, this area. So we, we thought it was a, a good fit. And finally, to finish the introduction on blockchain, we implement uh, a very simple Python-based blockchain, which we call blockchain for students, perhaps uh, for the lack of a better name. And in this blockchain, we uh, it's a proof of work based blockchain. We uh, explain some of the concepts underlying blockchain. So what is proof of work? How is the information structured you know, into blocks, each block containing a hash to the previous block? And uh, this way students can put their hands uh, on the code and understand how, how all those concepts are, are linked and how they can be leveraged to build a real blockchain, let's say. So that was the first goal. The second goal is to introduce Hyperledger Fabric, talk a bit about the chain code, the infrastructure, and finally how to leverage all of this to build a full stack decentralized application on Fabric. I should mention that while we have lots of information on uh, public blockchain, so how to structure smart contracts and the infrastructure and the decentralized applications, on permission and blockchains, uh, there are no, not so many examples. So for these, we have three labs. The first one introduces a, a use case that we implement uh, with Hyperledger Fabric, which is essentially a system for students to provide feedback about professors and about courses. Secondly, we elaborate on, on that system and we implement smart contracts. We explain what are smart contracts and how can they fulfill the needs, the requirements for the use case that we propose. We set up a, a simple version of the network of the infrastructure. After that, we leverage what we've learned before and we build a full stack decentralized application. So the on-chain components comprising the blockchain itself, the, particip the participants, the smart contracts, and then the off-chain components, which are basically web applications that contact with the blockchain. Finally, we, we had the last goal for this internship, which was, which was to introduce Umbra, Hyperledger Umbra. Hyperledger Umbra is uh, another Hyperledger lab project, which goal, uh, whose goal is to provide an emulation platform for several blockchains based on the Mininet platform. So with Umbra, you could set up in an easy way a fabric network and study how each component uh, reacts uh, as a function of uh, environment, uh, environment variable. So for instance, what happens if we dramatic, dramatically reduce the the memory that is associated to the order of peer. What are what are the implications on transaction throughput on latency, for example? And these uh, this platform allows us to to make conclusions on uh, how robust is our network and how we how we can leverage uh, a stronger network. Only two labs have been done. Um, actually, the second one was not finalized uh, because there were some dependencies that we were out of our reach to fulfill. But lab seven introduces AMPA. So it explains what it is, what are the simple commands that you can uh, leverage to create a, a network with AMPA, and also a simple experiment. So regarding the structure, uh, the project is hosted on GitHub. We have guides instructor guides and support code. The guides are documents that can be used by the teaching staff. So professors, uh, people at companies, uh, etc. cetera. For, teach, for uh, teaching the students, uh, the contents of, of the laboratory, that's, that's the guide. The instructor's guide contains instructions on how to do it. So while the guide is aimed for students to, to, to solve, the instructor's guide provides hints and, and the solutions too for the teaching staff. And finally, the support folder contains all the support code that it's used on each of the labs. This is lab one. We, we can see a guide and an instructor's guide folder like at every lab. And in the guide folder, uh, you can see the content of, of the lab. Currently we use LaTeX to to define uh, the contents, uh, 
LaTeX is a, a processing text processing tool, which is widely used for technical reports, academic papers, etc. And uh, we used this format because uh, academics uh, at universities are uh, very used to this to this tool. While this is um, quite convenient, quite easy to use by academics, maybe perhaps it's not the the most appropriate format to to expose uh, on GitHub. So one of the feature work directions is to migrate these uh, LaTeX documents into Markdown, for example, so it's easier to access. And then the support code. Here in Lab 6, in this example, we can see that this is a typical structure for a Fabric application. We have the chain code folder, we have the test network, which was uh, forked from the, the samples repo. Uh, we have the binaries, and then we have uh, configurations and uh, the specific um, files for from our project. So every every lab is uh, available. It was pre-tested uh, by some of the contributors, um, and it's uh, it's on good shape to be tested by a broader audience. So this was great uh, because uh, we work in a in a small team. There are there are already some contributors to the course, which I I thank them once again, um, and. Of course, this is an open source project. It's uh, it's free. It's uh, available. That it is documented. So anyone who would like to leverage this this course or to contribute is greatly uh, welcome. There are some ways that you can uh, leverage this course for uh, for your own, own goals, which is consolidate the concepts on blockchain. If you want to to learn a bit more, if you want to teach or to dis disseminate technology. And also it provides uh, a good boilerplate for implementing Hyperledger Fabric-based apps. So it contains uh, pretty much uh, everything that you need for a solid proof of concept, at least. So it contains the, the chain code, it contains uh, a simple network, it contains a web application, uh, which is the basis. For future work, uh, as this course is very modular, we can uh, introduce other hyperledger technology courses or even non hyperledger technology courses, uh, modules, I, I mean. So for hyperledger cactus, which is the most recent hyperledger project dedicated to interoperability, Bezu, Indy, Aries, well, uh, lots of technology that we could use here. And add some theory. There are other ways uh, to contribute and uh, other, uh, let's say, work categories for the course, but those are the main ones. Uh, and this is my presentation. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. And I will be glad to answer questions. Okay, thank you, Ravi. Ah, thank you, Raphael, for your uh, presentation. Yes, so I think one of my questions would be the conversion from LaTeX to Markdown. So I'm really used to, to, to LaTeX from my university time, but uh, I tried uh, your course a little bit, and um, uh, and in your description, it is uh, descriptive that you have to use. Um, you know, we can use Overleaf, so and this works very well, I think. But uh, I can't uh, work at locally with my local setup uh, from uh, Tech Studio. Uh, this this uh, this doesn't work for me. But so it would be, I think it would be great that if there is a conversion to Markdown so that we can uh, use it in a little bit easier way. And uh, yeah, so, but you name, you, you said it, that um, uh, you, you work or in future, you will convert this course also to Markdown. And uh, I think it's a good, good way to do this. Um, okay, yeah. are there any other questions? Yeah, just to elaborate a bit on that, thank you, Roland, for bringing that up. Definitely using Overleaf, it's quite easy, uh, but we shouldn't rely on, uh, let's say, external tools to use the course, right? And sometimes it's a bit cumbersome to, uh, to set up a local uh, LaTeX instantiation that can compile the, the, the course because it has some dependencies on, on external packages. So definitely Markdown would be a much easier way for the, 
the broad community to access the content. However, there is also, uh, uh, there are compiled uh, PDFs uh, from, the, from each laboratory on the release, but this is not very scalable. So definitely it needs to be converted to Markdown eventually. And uh, maybe another question. Um, do you know how many uh, students use your course or how many universities use your course? Uh, thank you. Uh, at the moment, the, the course was just finished uh, a couple weeks ago uh, and it's not 100% finished, of course. Uh, I've been talking to the Hyper Ledger uh, Education Materials Working Group and we are in the process of contacting uh, universities to see if they're interested. But uh, I would say definitely yes, most of the blockchain courses I've seen from universities are aimed for Ethereum, Bitcoin, public blockchains, and there is not so much material on enterprise blockchain. And with the interest of uh, blockchain raising up, uh, I think that eventually um, courses like this one would be very useful for universities and for enterprises that need to teach enterprise blockchain. Yeah, I think I think that's a good idea. So and uh, and it's true that there are not so many courses out there. So when you look at the Linux Foundation, there are some courses, and but um, I didn't find any other courses in on the internet, for example. So and. Um, I think most uh, people uh, want to start with the blockchain uh, or want to want to go into this blockchain world and um, they start with favorite and um, what I like on your course I think is that it's a little bit more about the traditional blockchain or blockchain in general so when you start with fabric then you learn a lot of how fabric uh, how you can configure fabric in a, in a, in a script way and uh, maybe you don't know so much behind uh, the technology um, you don't know how proof of, proof of work works the content algorithm works or the uh, cryptographic materials works and fabric ca or the certified authority works so um, in this in this blockchain world there are a lot of technologies uh, are, are surround this uh, blockchain and um, most courses only cover the specific items so also when you look at the official hyperledger foundation preparation course for the admin certification there you have uh, only specific items which are covered and uh, there are not some surrounding technologies covered and uh, that makes some people uh, which are new to this technology uh, very difficult to introduce and um, uh, or to start with this technology mm -hmm. so and i think it's a good idea to bring the people uh, not from zero but from a certain level uh, a little bit closer to the specific uh, elements of uh, fabric for examples or maybe also other blockchain types public like uh, permissions i totally agree i would just add a small uh, comment we tried to make this course uh, a bit wider uh, perhaps try to eliminate a bit the bias of uh, blockchain is crypto so we uh, tried to, to cover a bit consensus proof of work raft which are uh, quite different in our implementation of blockchain for students and then more the more enterprise uh, vision uh, like blockchain and this allows us to have uh, a better foundation i believe to to learn new blockchain and when i started learning blockchain about three years ago so not that long i found it very very difficult to get into the space um, especially because fabric is evolving so so fast that it's pretty difficult to catch up um, and also there are not so many courses on fabric version 2 uh, this is one of the reasons that we decided to um, to use version 2 on this course yes yeah. so um okay so um there's one question in the in the chat um why the dollar one fee so 
what does this question mean? Uh, no, sorry, um, the, the one that I think the question was for Jaika Joseph Jones, who sent a, a link to a meetup group. But ah, there okay. is one, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, will, I have a question though. Um, is the course uh, available on Coursera or the MOOC platform, or are you going to build one of your own? Uh, hey Omar, um, no, currently no. Currently we're, let's say, the testing phase. Um, if if it's to be on Coursera, this version of the course, it should be uh, totally open. I'm not sure if, if, if that's possible, I think so. Uh, but currently it's only on, on GitHub. Um, probably it would benefit from having some more modules uh, and classes before it is uh, scaled in that direction. Okay, so you are building it uh, still? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's very e extensible, uh, as in universities that teach in semesters can just pick two modules uh, and even the labs from those modules. So there is really no limitation on how much content can be added and there is no strict, uh, let's say, flow uh, for the labs. So the recommended is you to make to to go for a module one and then module two, but you can only do module one, only module two. You can also do module two without doing module one. So that's the idea, that you, you learn what you need to learn. It's on a demand basis. Okay, I see, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you, Rafael, for your presentation and your contribution. And you uh, for the invitation. now, I would like to switch over to Ravi to his uh, presentation. And uh, you're ready, Ravi? Yeah, thanks, Roland. I'm audible? Yes, you're audible. You can start. Yeah, that's a nice presentation, uh, Rafael. Um, so, probably, uh, definitely, I'm going to be a part of your student in your university course. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Well, uh, okay, let me share my screen. Is that my screen uh, was viewable for all? Yes. Yeah, please yes, let me know. Okay, right. that's right. Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening all. Uh, thanks for giving this chance to present uh, this my site project. So the story of the site project uh, I would call out here is I was learning a hyperledger. Um, so while uh, especially starting from Fabric, I faced a lot of problems uh, in configuring the tools, uh, configuring the files. So led to the part every time when I want to modify some parameters, uh, environment variables, uh, I faced a lot of issues, a lot of errors. So that puts me along a journey to learn, but yes, that is a very good to learn uh, journey. But uh, that is what I thought of it. Let's have a configurator tool, uh, a simple way of configuration tool that, uh, you know, uh, test that uh, with simple modifications where we do a general uh, minor uh, mistakes uh, as a human error. So that is where I created this tool as a site project. Okay, uh, especially this is going to be long for the, um, for the learners who uh, especially wants to learn a Hyperledger uh, platform. So currently it is um, tested in uh, Hyperledger fabric, uh, specifically in the three environments uh, with the different versions from 1.4.3 to 2.2.0. And the environment is single host environment uh, and uh, Kubernetes and uh, Docker of Swam. So uh, that's for three environments it has been tested and uh, it is, uh, that's why we had tested it on this far. Uh, so it's all based and developed uh, using the cell scripting uh, and uh, Python and Ansible uh, for the configuration modifications. And we use the Docker Compose templates as usual that from the BYFN and EYFNs. Uh, there's another uh, one that I have explained some time ago about this, how the BYFN and EYFN was working. It's also available in the, uh, in the GitHub repository. So it is, is an up, upgraded version of that. Uh, and what you can do with this tool, uh, of course, yes, you can change their domain name, however you want to, organization number of organizations, you can change uh, organization name, you can change, uh, you can define the orders, 
you can define all of the names, peers, and CEAs. And it is unlimited for uh, all the numbers currently, and uh, unlimited channel names. And uh, also, you have a toggle between the versions, between the uh, raft and the solo versions. And as I said, uh, it is tested configuration in three environments, um, single hosting and that was on Kubernetes. And I plan to do expand this in further and going forward on this uh, tool. Uh, so I think uh, that's all um, uh, about this from presentation point. So if you're all good, we can move to the demo. So I am going to uh, log in this tool. Uh, I hope you all see my screen. Yes, we are. Okay. So, so once you log into this tool, uh, this tool, uh, it is a web-enabled uh, tool uh, using Vetty. Uh, so the username and passwords are listed in the website here. If you go down, uh, it is there. You can use this login uh, name and the passwords. So once you have this tool, uh, you can log in and you can choose the frame. Currently it is available for the fabric. So uh, you can generate the configurations. So since uh, you can choose any of these seven choices, so currently I am choosing uh, seven. And I can say some domain names here. Uh, I'm going to use for Kubernetes. Uh, so I say Kubernetes and I would say uh, default args. I, it's a default, everything comes with a BYFN. Uh, that's why I took as a, a staging area. And if you want to uh, increase the numbers, uh, definitely you can increase the numbers. So I'm going to give a default here and uh, a name. You can again, you can give a name here. Default peer count is and uh, uh, Kubernetes. I have have a template with a three uh, node cluster for the demo purpose. So I'm going to choose a three node uh, orderer. The order names are order zero one two and uh, number of CS. Uh, again, the template for two templates as I've created now because of uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, we have a two organizations, so I each one uh, will go to uh, one CS go to each organizations. A chain code for demo, it's a, a single um, chain code, a single uh, my channel. So once you provided this configuration, uh, it generates a configuration tool, updates uh, the two files, config TX file and uh, you know a crypto config file, along with your uh, Docker Compose files. So again, uh, for now it's again a raft. Here, uh, you have a choice to select uh, environment, a single host Docker Swarm Kubernetes. Um, you can, again, I'm going to do a Kubernetes here. Uh, the namespace for Kubernetes, uh, I use KL, uh, Chellof for Fabric. And once you're done, it will ask you an email. So uh, you, ha you, can, you have to provide an email here so that the config will uh, send uh, in a zip format and over email. So it's, it's uh, so now it will, uh, it will generate and it will send the email. So if you look at the email, uh, definitely it will be, uh, you will be receiving it. So for this, uh, for demo purpose, I already said the same configuration. I already uh, downloaded it to my uh, lab machine. So you're able to see my screen. Yes. Okay. So I hope that you're able to see the fonts, right? You are able to readable. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I, I received that email and I already received this one generated and I already downloaded that into my uh, this lab machine. So this is a uh, uh, file that I receive over the email 
and to run this uh, there are two things currently so you should your environment linux environment should uh, table with the free request is um, this tool also generates that so you have the free request is uh, executed sorry Uh, so, uh, so I downloaded, I executed the prerequisites to install the Docker Compose uh, uh, mini cube environment, okay, and also downloaded the fabric samples with the version of 2.2.0. You can see that uh, samples here. So the the prerequisite was once you have done this, you have with your configuration tool, you can create a some file. So you have here with the default. So I'm going to create a directory here, create as demo. And I'm going to pull this file. Uh, hey, can you can you go on mute? I think Omar, you're it's, it's a background noise we are receiving. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. So I'm going to uh, extract. So you have these files. Let me clear the screen. Uh, so you have all these files: config, uh, so config, then the explorer, uh, creators, uh, configuration, uh, the create uh, pod files. Okay, and this is the readme file. So to do this source uh, readme, uh, so you it will give you it will give some instructions uh, how to mount uh, the volumes for the persistent data uh, in the Kubernetes environment. So I'm going to give this as an environment. And this will update at my current uh, uh, folder structure. And I also want to mount, uh, Put that into the backend uh, one, so it will be mounted in that backend. So now you have all the files here. Now, if you look at here, uh, it says that uh, you have to start executing these commands. So initially, it will create, uh, clean up anything if it is there uh, and create a crypto uh, artif artifacts, right? So this is all. It's uh, again. Uh, if you look at here, the readme file uh, for the Purpose. Uh, I just put all the environments here, all the scripts are there. Uh, so, for us, I'm going to call the command. First one is a, a cleanup and a create. So, it executed uh, the artifacts. And the next is I'm going to do a replacement of uh, keys uh, because. Uh, uh, in a two version, it is uh, the private key files are in the private key. Earlier it was uh, uh, random numbers. So, uh, of course, you try to replace if you are running the different uh, versions. So, the next is I have to go and uh, do a deployment. Uh, so, if you are uh, I mean, if you want to deploy the commands, you always uh, do a tab in the, the next one. So first I have done this uh, and I have created, uh, uh, replaced the keys here. And now I'm going to deploy the pods. So it will start uh, uh, generating the names, uh, namespace that we have created and it will generate, uh, create the pods now. So uh, this is currently it is running and other search uh, probably if you go and look uh, the logs probably it may trying to download the images. Uh, 
uh, it's our executor now. So, so far, go. I'm going to say, okay, is running. Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah, very good. So all pods are I would uh, means are downloaded and uh, I'm was able to run now. So we are good in this now. So I'm going to join the channel now. So join this uh, command calling this particular service. So it is going to join the channel. Right, so uh, all the uh, uh, peers are joined the channel, including auditor, and uh, also the peer zero was become uh, anchor peer now. So next, I'm going to. Uh, so now, uh, what this template is going to be do? It is going to execute the external uh, chain code. That is what I have did this the Kubernetes. So it it the chain code will be a. a, a what is it? Exclu I mean, uh, exclusive of uh, you know um, Docker container, which is uh, uh, I mean uh, the feature of uh, version two. So uh, before I uh, start uh, installing it, I'm going to build uh, the chain code container. So I'm going to do build the chain code for which is the, the chain code is currently some marbles I have chosen. So the chain code was built and it's available. The images are available, right? And uh, now I am going to uh, install the chain code. Now the script is switching to uh, R2 CLI here. Uh, so once it's switching to R2 CLI, it is again installing in the R2 as well. And getting approved. Yeah, so now you can see uh, the, uh, the two organizations are getting approved with this chain code. So now I'm going to start I'm going to start the chain code. So now it's uh, the chain code uh, problems was getting deployed for my organization. So here, uh, if you look out here, the message uh, R2 CCID, uh, this is very important uh, because once you install this um, the CCID, this will be updated into the chain code uh, containers for each container. So then, then that's where it is getting, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the communication happens with the peer and the chain code respectively. Well, that's good. So it's get executed. So initially it was uh, invoking the transactions and I was doing a query from the organization one and the same thing is now it is executing from the uh, querying from the ARC2. So that you can see here, um, it was execu executing from the ARC2. And then uh, it also executed, uh, the, the another one was executed from the ARC2. Here, this was executed and uh, also querying it from the ARC2. So this is what's done from the fabric point of view. Now, uh, if you would like to start Explorer as part of a package, uh, you can also start Explorer. Yeah. 
Because the, the motto of this uh, from uh, this part is completely uh, the person who comes uh, from the beginning to learn hyperledger, so she should have complete package of it uh, because he should be easily to understand. Uh, you know what are the things that you have to give it the the, the changes versions commands everything. So if you go from the menu based uh, from there, it can able to understand. From the fabric point of view to explore and kind of caliber so that's a package that can currently building out to understand the fabric uh, uh, one of the umbrella of hyperledger right okay so it says uh, okay. So it's uh, running now. So I'm just going to check it out whether it is able to connect it to the network or not. So yeah, it's connected and it started uh, grabbing the blocks here. You can see uh, you can get the blocks. So let's browse it uh, before browsing. Uh, we come to know what is the services uh, comparison it is. So currently I configured with uh, uh, 31313. Uh, so for that, uh, I have this one. So if you look for just for it, we do the Minikube Service Explorer. Um, so you will get the service, what services it was getting exported. I'm so sorry. So it's not HL of 8, it's a HL of so this is the port that we have to run. Um, since uh, this Ubuntu machine was running on the virtual machine on my uh, Windows laptop, so I'm not able to browse this from my laptop. So what I am going to do is, uh, I've already installed a headless uh, Firefox uh, app in this uh, Ubuntu machine. So for that, I'm going to use my uh, XLaunch uh, from the Windows environment. So if I'm going to use uh, Firefox. Okay, let me put this at this display. Uh, yes, fine. Okay, uh, why this is not happening? Uh, because uh, I didn't export this putty session. So I'm going to open the new putty session. So this is I'm doing regularly, I'm doing these mistakes. Yeah, that is what it is. Going to run Firefox here. Right. Uh, do you able to see my Firefox uh, screen? Yes. Yes. Well, okay. So let me put, because always this happens here, I'm going to private window because some catchy is always there in the thing. So if you look at this, uh, so you'll get a Explorer mm -hmm. over here. So you can completely, that's a package. So the next time I was working out on the uh, uh, caliper, that I'm going to integrate this and also working out on the multiple uh, templates that are available or custom templates that you can uh, mix around with your cookbooks. That's all about uh, this tool. Uh, any questions? Yes, yeah, thank you, Ravi, for this 
cool presentation. So I'm very express, uh, impressed. And uh, that's really cool work, I think so. I have tried your 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 system in uh, one week ago, but it it doesn't work for me. And uh, but I did uh, I did a mistake, I think so. But I think that's a really impressive project you did. So thank you for sharing this. And um, yeah, it's really really cool stuff. I think so. Okay, so are there any questions out there? Maybe to the Kubernetes. So because this is this is, is new, I think. So in our series here in the uh, in this hyperledger study circle, we have always seen the Docker or Docker Swarm, uh, but we have uh, no not Kubernetes seen in action. So that's also cool that we have uh, that you did this with the, the demonstration with Kubernetes. So is maybe any question to this? from the community? Um, yes. Um, first, I would like to join everybody here, I think, by and um, congratulate uh, for all this impressive work. Um, I'm sure it will be of uh, many users if, uh, if, we, if it is uh, publicly available. Um, so the question is uh, regarding the Kubernetes uh, orientation. Is it production ready? And the second question is uh, in which language do, do you uh, did you develop the, the this simplicity uh, tool? And uh, is it uh, open source? And how can we contribute? So thank you again. Yes. Uh... So uh, the, to the first question, uh, the, it, the Kubernetes, it is runs on the Minikube. Um, so, but the configuration that the, that the template that we have, yes, you can get it into your deployment to the production environment. Of course, you have to do some uh, your changes according to your uh, local environment, but it's a template. Uh, it is going to send you, the tool is going to send you over the email and you can deploy whether you want to be uh, Deploy it on your local Minikube uh, system, or you can deploy it on any AWS or you know, any environment uh, in the production ready environment. That's one. Uh, number two uh, to the question uh, this tool is developed completely based on the shell scripting, uh, bash shell scripting, and uh, Ansible and Python. Uh, these two are two or three major components have been used for developing this tool. Third, uh, for the contribution, of course, yes, uh, I'm going to put that into this tool, uh, open source, uh, into the, I mean, the open source in this one. Uh, before that, I was optimizing this, uh, I was doing the optimization uh, to, to answer the other question to uh, uh, Roland. Uh, I was optimizing this tool, so there are some errors was came in the last week, uh, so that's where you may also end up something. Uh, but definitely it is, I'm just fine tuning it and optimizing the script uh, for the better uh, performance. And uh, and also you're looking for the test cases uh, and the contribution point of view and development point of view. Uh, soon this is this going, this tool is going to be available in the open source uh, through GitHub. Uh, is that answer to your question? Um, yes, I, yes. It is, um, uh, and uh, uh, it's not. Uh, so if you look out, uh, I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So if you look out that uh, the uh, the web portal, uh, HL Tool dot Knowledge Society, you have that link over there for the GitHub. Uh, it will going to be available in that uh, same mm. location. Uh, for that's what I was uh, I was waiting for. Uh, people can do test, and if they have any errors and issues, or probably if they open up some PR request or something issues, mm -hmm. uh, so probably I can go and fix it and put that update. So that is what I was working out. Before uh, uh, before I update to uh, open source, I want to uh, mm -hmm. clear uh, minor issues or major issues. Mm -hmm. uh, once that is done, uh, definitely this tool is going to be available in open source. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sorry, I didn't um, heard from the language. Is it Python or Python or is it Go or something? Uh, I, I, I understand he is a combination of bash scripting and other things, but uh, mainly what's the orientation? Yeah. 
So I also working out uh, with um, uh, hyperledger labs for this. Uh, so uh, to put that because of uh, other frameworks that I'm planning out. Um, so yes, you can. Uh, it's that that tool. And uh, there's a question from um, chat. I just posted that um, the yeah. link. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. okay, so if there are no questions anymore, then I have to say thank you to all uh, contributors, to Rafael and Ravi for this really, really impressive session today. And uh, yeah, so I think we are good in time for, for today. And uh, if no questions, then we can close the session today. And we will see us again um, on the next session. Thank you for all and uh, stay safe and stay at home. Thank you, very safe. stay safe. See you. Thank you. Thank you, bye.